1992, I used a Synclavier 2 at a studio for a session uh, doing uh, music for a commercial uh, for a video game, actually. And uh, I remember the patch had an interesting, a very interesting quality. It uh, felt it sounded like a harpsichord at the uh, at the at the attack and had an almost uh, string section like uh, uh, release. Can you talk a little bit about how uh, Synclavier patches got the way they did? Sure. Well, the first Synclavier was really, um, it's an additive synthesizer, unlike a, a subtractive synthesis, which is analog. You filter out the sound. Digital is additive, so you add in your harmonics. And the original Synclavier essentially had one channel of 24 harmonics that you could add in to create your sound. And one of the chief product development people, a guy named Danny Yeager, who was, in my mind, the most brilliant uh, sound person I've ever dealt with, um, uh, came up with the idea of a multi-timbre uh, or partial timbre uh, synthesis where you would layer four channels simultaneously with one key depression. So you could essentially have 96 harmonics being triggered, different envelopes, different attacks, different harmonic structures, and that gave the sound a very complex sound. And uh, he proved that point by coming up with this phenomenal string patch that when he first played it for us, it sounded like there was a real violinist in the room stroking the bow against the rosin, and you could hear it, and it just blew us away. And this was 1979 he did this. And um, he kind of envisioned this. And then, of course, we had a brilliant engineer in Sidney Alonzo and our software guy, uh, Cameron Jones, who knew how to create the vision that he was hearing. And uh, as a team, they did a, a brilliant job. What sample rates were you running at in the, in the, uh, during then? Well, when we, when we morphed to sampling, we, we sampled at uh, 50 kilohertz up to 100 kilohertz. And we had a 16-bit, uh, we were the first ones to develop 16-bit resolution, but the way uh, Sidney Alonzo developed the uh, resolution, it actually had a little higher bit quality than 16-bit. And, uh, you know, basically you had to determine how much time you wanted to use if you're sampling at 100K. You were using memory in a hurry. And memory back then was very expensive. And because people didn't realize they were buying and paying for software, we would charge you $1,000 a megabyte. So uh, because we couldn't get you to pay for software because we couldn't tell you it was a computer because you, to you it was a musical instrument. That's a dollar a byte. Right, a dollar a byte. And, uh, but on the other hand, uh, you know, it, we were really paying for the software development by charging for the hardware. So, um, you know, you could do, most people settled at 50 kilohertz, but some of the real audiophile uh, recording engineer people, uh, George Massenberg, people like that, they were all using the 100, kilo, 100 kilohertz uh, all the time because they wanted that ultra fidelity. How many Synclavirs would you guess are still in service today? I think we uh, sold at least over uh, between the uh, d direct to disc and the Synclavier about a thousand, maybe eleven hundred systems, and I think the last count there were probably fifty to seventy-five still in use, and a lot of the major artists, and I know some of the uh, major uh, post-production people still use the system for uh, certain aspects of their uh, business.